Hello everybody, I'm uh, Paul Hudson, I CEO of FlexMR, and today I'm going to talk to you about using uh, flowcharts in survey design. So the topic is how to use flowcharts in survey design. Uh, typically most surveys at the moment are written in a script-like view, um, and today we're going to look at how maybe using flowcharts might aid the design of our surveys. So first of all, what is a flowchart? I'm sure we've all seen one, uh, but it's worth just starting this at the beginning. A flowchart is a separate step, set of steps uh, that show a sequential order of actions or outputs or decisions. They're useful to be used when talking about complex processes, communicating processes to other people, studying processes to find improvements, and trying to look at complexity of action. Flowcharts are used in a wide set of circumstances and across different industries. Here's just six, uh, from user interface designers, system architecture, business process management, project management, or chemical engineering. The commonality is that visual language that can be used and shared across professions. So if we took a flowchart if, of user interface design, could possibly share that with a chemical engineer and they'd have a, a good idea of what the process was or at least the order of steps. And so should be the case if we used it in survey design, we would be able to share that uh, easily between people and other stakeholders in our organizations as well. And today I'm going to look at four questions uh, in this order. So number one, what is the purpose of survey logic? So we're going to start at the beginning of why we use survey logic and why using survey logic can also lead to complexity. Number three, how do flowcharts reduce that complexity and how flowcharts could be best applied to survey design uh, going forward? So starting at the beginning, let's step back to understand why we have survey logic in the first place and what is the purpose of survey logic. Well to understand that we also have to look first at the purpose of a survey. The purpose of any survey is ultimately to validate or find a truth uh, in some form. And to validate that truth we look through the lens of a study and the findings of a study and ultimately at the beginning we start with a primary research question. And it's that primary research question that the survey is seeking to answer. However, there's rarely only ever one question. Whilst we might start with a primary question, we often and typically end up with many more. So for example, this is looking at an advert, a well-known advert uh, on the left. And the primary research question might be, is that advert effective? But as we all know as researchers, when we discuss that with stakeholders, what will happen is lots of other questions will come up. Is the advert effective? How long is it remembered for? What messages are remembered? Does it drive action? Does the advert convey the right message? What's remembered? What attributes are associated with that uh, advert? Which audiences does the advert resonate with most? Who are they? What are their traits? What are their shared beliefs? And what effect does the ad have on my brand? How does it change brand perception? So very, very quickly, we end up with lots and lots of questions from that one primary objective question. This leads to a basic problem. As we increase the number of questions, we increase the length of the survey, potentially harming the experience of the survey and maybe even harming our response rate. So the more questions we want to answer, the worse that experience for the participant can become. And to maintain that experience or to make it okay for the participant, there are two things that we as researchers can consider. The first is chunking, answering less questions per survey, maybe having more surveys with fewer questions in them. That can become unwieldy. So what we have instead is survey logic. We use logic to shorten individual routes through that survey. So every participant's view of that survey might be different to the other, depending on the questions that we answer. And as we answer one question, it affects which question we answer next. 
So we all end up with a personal view of that survey. So why is logic complicated? What happens in the survey design process to make that complicated for us? Well, first of all, there's two types of logic on the left-hand side of that slide. There's question logic and there's routing logic. Question logic is typically applied about the question, uh, text substitution, answer masking, etc. Routing logic, on the other hand, looks at the branching and the skips, the randomizations and the quotas. And those two types of logic are applied through our survey design. And on the right hand side, we look at the second problem, which is the way we frequently design surveys in a paginated or scripted fashion. Typically surveys start life on a Word document. We write out lots of questions. We focus our minds on the questions and the answers quite rightly. We focus on discussing that with our stakeholders. Typically that ends up with quite a long document that we can then upload into our survey scripting process. We end up with a paginated view of all of those survey questions. There's no immediate uh, process visualization. It's not instantly uh, easy to see what that process and that order might be for participants. And that's where flowcharts can come in. Flowcharts can help us reduce complexity by introducing what we have in front of us is a set of visual language. So all of these things are a visual language that can be used in flowcharts and that would be common across all of those industries and sectors and professions that we talked about at the beginning. So flowcharts can be used to improve that situation by giving us that visual common language. Let's see what a flowchart looks like for a survey on the next slide here. So this is an example of a very, very simple survey. Uh, the survey itself only has five questions uh, on there. Question four, five, 26 and 21. And you can see instant we've got a visual representation of our survey. And rather than just seeing the script of the survey questions, we can now also see the flow. We've got a flavor of the questions, but we can also see the flow of the survey, the branching logic uh, that's used in, in that survey. Instantly, that complexity has been reduced for us. It's easily understood. I could easily pass that uh, across the stakeholders and stakeholders could see where the logic is being applied and the flows that apply to it. In this particular example, I say we have five questions, but the maximum any participant could ever be asked is four. The minimum questions a participant could ask could be asked is two and the most frequent is probably around about three so you can see how that uh, visual representation makes it easier to see we can also see there how the survey logic reduces uh, the number of questions that somebody answers and personalizes the route depending on their answers so that's a good example a very simple example of how uh, a survey could be represented in the visual flow chart And let's look at that uh, a bit further. On this slide at the top, you could imagine the top half of that slide as being a traditional scripted survey. So were it not in a flow chart, it would just be a list of questions, uh, question numbers or question text through what, one through to 14 plus. And underneath it, we've applied our routing logic, survey logic to each of those questions through the quotas, the randomizations and the potential skips. So it gives us what is essentially a linear view of the questions in my survey script. It's much harder to view that as, as a linear order than the previous slide as a visual visualization through a flowchart. A further way to deal with uh, flowcharts is to use subroutines and subroutines are blocks of questions in our case of surveys or blocks of actions in the language of a flowchart. So at the bottom, for example, question one to four is one subroutine around the quota logic. Question five to eight is another subroutine around the randomization routine. Nine to 15 is another subroutine of, of skips. And what this subroutine element by blocking questions together with those actions and questions together, it allows us a way of zooming in and out of a flowchart potentially. 
So we can zoom out to get a macro view, or we could zoom in to see the detail of one of those individual subroutines. A further way of thinking about subroutines is to think about stories and telling the survey through a series of stories of subroutines. So each subroutine is a story in itself. Now, if you take a bit of theory for a moment, uh, in any sort of storytelling, uh, mystical number of seven appears. So seven is about effective memory and is, makes it an easy way uh, of, of memorizing and understanding a survey. So if we have too many uh, subroutines in a survey, our survey probably will be too long and it will make it hard for the participant to move through. So in an ideal survey, we could use maybe seven subroutines and each subroutine would act as a cluster of questions uh, and, and that would in itself allow us to zoom out and reduce the pagination. Again, let's look at that in practice. So if we return to our previous example of the primary research question, looking at the advert effectiveness, the same advert appearing on the left there, the primary research question was, can this advert be improved before its launch? And now what we have is a very simple overview of, of our survey structure in a series of four subroutines. So in story one, we might be asking a series of questions about the audience. Story two, a set of questions about the emotions. Story three, three a set of questions about the memory. And each of those subroutines has within it a block of questions and actions that allow us to look at each of those question areas in detail. In essence, what we are doing is breaking our survey into a series of sections or blocks and each of those blocks has within it uh, a series of questions and logic applied to them. And what this idea of subroutines gives us is quite a nice idea moving forward with using flowcharts and how flowcharts could maybe make life easier for survey design because we could build a library uh, of sub subroutines. So the moment we frequently have uh, question libraries in survey systems. So a question library would just be a series of questions that are previously written and could be taken into a survey. What the subroutines would give us is the ability to have a library of subroutines. So every subroutine could be stored. And the advantage over a question library is we are now packing together not just the questions, but the actions and the logic applied within it. So we're saving um, the programming, and the logic and the questions in each of those subroutines. If we had a library of subroutines uh, to be able to, on alongside our survey design, we'd be able to just drag and drop maybe those blocks uh, of subroutines onto our flowchart interface uh, and save ourselves some time. Potentially going forward as, as a self-service user of survey design, that would allow a self-service maybe stakeholder to create a very good uh, research survey with a quicker uh, time frame. So in front of us, we have a library of subroutines. We have some basic demographic subroutine, which we may use over and over again. We may, may have a product satisfaction block, a uh, service satisfaction block, or a pricing routine, or a concept testing routine. And what we'll be able to do is then build a survey by using these building blocks of subroutines. So here's an example of that. Uh, the ones in blue we've taken from our subroutine on the on library on the left, basic demographics, product satisfaction, innovation, feedback, concept testing, and measuring behaviors. And we've put them on, on the right hand side into our basic survey overflow, over, overview. So we can see the overview of that uh, survey in its subroutines. And then we'd be able to zoom into each of those subroutines uh, to explore in more detail uh, the flowchart of each of those subroutines in themselves. So moving forward, we don't just have the idea of a flowchart, but we can also have the idea of subroutines that speed up the programming even further. And then to look at uh, the future of flowcharts uh, in survey design. So four key points come out of this uh, presentation for me. Uh, number one, potentially that visualization of a survey 
uh, in a flowchart allows us to automate testing. You probably need less testing anyway with a visual flowchart just because you can visually see the logic. So in the past when it was seen as a paginated survey script, you would have to keep running through the survey and test sequences to follow each track and check the logic had been applied correctly. As a visualization, you can instantly see where the breaks are in the chain or where the logic connections don't quite make sense. The system would also be able to automate that because it would be instantly obvious to the system where the, the connections between nodes weren't correct. So the flowchart, the visualization, and the, the, the node element makes it uh, easier uh, to test. It removes the need for testing and automates it in the future. The second element is libraries of question clusters, which include pre-programmed logic as well as question design, together enabling us to pre-design surveys through best practice, save that and build them up in, in libraries to be applied to our flowchart. Number three, uh, the reduction of the pagination, so changing the design interface uh, to replace a, a linear script of questions. Uh, with that flowchart language does two things for me. One, it allows us to create better content structures. Uh, and two, it allows us to communicate uh, the survey design more easily with stakeholders around the business. And potentially going forward, if we want to embrace more self-service uh, research across organizations and it increase not only the number of surveys that are done in an organization, but also simultaneously improve the quality of them, then this visual language, which is more common across professions, probably means it's a lot easier uh, for stakeholders as an organization, not only to understand a survey, uh, but to actually uh, design a survey more logically for themselves. They don't have to think about it in the way that we've been trained. And the final point would be that it represents uh, invisible processes and systems at play within surveys. So it simplifies that complexity it encourages that better design and it probably takes us forward into a uh, new world of surveys within uh, our organization so those are the four summary points uh, around how flowcharts are best applied to survey design uh, in the future and thank you for listening so now i'm just going to pause and uh, ask uh, invite questions from you thank you very much